Today, let's build ourselves a model-driven app, right? This is episode three in a multi-part series about the difference between model-driven apps and Canvas apps. And so in episode one, we built a solution. Episode two, we set up all of the tables and put some sample data in there. So in episode three, we're going to just, boom, build a model-driven app. And what we're going to do in order to build that is we first got to go in and customize our form. We're then going to customize our views. But with all that done, we'll press a button and just like that, we will have a model-driven app. Sound like fun? Let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. Over here, we've got the solution open that we built last time with all the tables, the choices, all that is done. And so now we want to do is we need to go back to those tables and we got to make some tweaks there, right? Because model-driven apps aren't as much about the app builder experience as it is getting the tables right and then it all kind of just flows up there. So let's first go into vendor table. And so under um, data experiences here, we're going to click on forms. And so what we want to work on right now is the main form. So we'll click on information here, and this will bring us to the default view of the form, which you're going to see is going to be very, very simplistic. There you go, right? It's got a little header. It's got a name, an owner. That's about it. So we need to get our fields in here. So typically what I'm going to do first, though, is like the owner, they can't modify anyway, but they, it's got to be here. So I will take this a lot of times and just drag this up here to the top, right? It's a little trick Juan taught me a long time ago. So then now I'm going to click into my uh, form here, and then I'm going to change it from one column into two. And then now over here, we can just start to add in the pieces, right? So what fields do we have? Well, we had name, we had region, we had contract date, we had approved, and then we had our... Um, our main contact, and then of course, we also last but not least have our logo. So they, they all are, we could drag, drag this over here, right? We'll put main contact over here, we'll put logo or approved right here. There you go. And if we feel like, you know, our logo is not tall enough, we can also always go in here and change this and be like, hey, you, or I guess it's called wide enough, but now we get to the whole bottom instead of just the one. I don't really think it needs that, but keep that in mind. All right, there's a lot of these customizations you can do, one harps and these in the class. But there you go, so now we've laid out the fields that we actually want. We're also just gonna call this my form, because it gets grouchy. And then we're gonna go here, we're gonna say save, and then as soon as it finishes saving, we will hit publish. All right, save is done, we'll hit publish. This is taking all of our changes and making them available. If something was using it, they get the updated version, obviously, so the first one, so you don't have to worry about that, but getting those published. All right, that's done. So now we can press back. And so now at this point, we could either go back into vendor and we could do its view, but I think what we're gonna to do to kind of make the video make more sense is we're going to go to our other table and go customize its form as well. So here we're now gonna to go to product and we're gonna do very similar, if it feels like almost the same exact steps, right? So we'll click on information here. Remember, notice there what form type main is what I was looking for in that list. And so this will drop us in. We're going to drag owner to the top as well. And then product name's already over here. And so what do we really want here? We want our price. We want our product image. We want our term. And we want our vendor. Now notice this time I didn't put it into two. So let's just click on the whole form itself. There you go. We'll change this back to two columns. And then now we can kind of drag things around again. I'll pull product image kind of down here. I want vendor above that right there. There you go. Well, I'll put this over here. So once again, you can kind of design these out, but right, we're not trying to overcomplicate things here. We're just trying to get to the core basis here. You know, Juan spends a whole day on this. I'm not going to. This time we're also just going to hit publish because publish will do a save and publish. The last time I just kind of went the, the two-step approach because I always feel better when I click save before I do anything else, but really uh, reality, we can just use publish. Okay, that's done. So we'll go back. So then now, right, and here's where I was saying information form type. So that's what you're looking for. You're trying to customize the main form. So don't let that overwhelm you. I went too fast there the first time. So now if we go back to product. So now the next thing we want to do, so that gets the forms ready. We also need to get the views ready. So we're going to views. And same type of thing, you're looking for the public default view, right? So this one right here, the active products. We're gonna click on that. So this loads up a little bit of a different interface, but still very similar, right? And so we don't care about created, for example, so we're just going to remove that column. And now we're just gonna bolt in columns. So we can do view column here, or over here on the left, the same way we did before. So we could just throw in, there's price, there's term, Right, and this is where I'm happy that I have example data. If you didn't put in a couple of fake blank records, you're really not sure you're getting the right fields. I know I'm getting the right fields. 
And so then the other one we want to put in here is our vendor. Our vendor though, so that's our vendor, but what if we also want to know something else about the vendor, right? So one of the things that you can do here is over on the left, you can do related. And so then this will show you all your lookups. And so in our case, we can say vendor. This will show you all of the fields from that vendor. And so now maybe instead of just showing you know that, we will also show their contract date. And so then this is pulling in related data. So your view has both core record data and related data. It's a pretty nice feature of these lookups. Now the last column you're probably thinking is we want to add that logo. Unfortunately, we do not have the logo column. Um, you can't show those here. Right? This is one of the downsides of model driven, I think, right? And when we do this in Canvas apps later, we'll have the logo, but that's okay, right? We'll be we'll, we'll survive without it. Keep in mind, you could also you could get some filtering, some sorting over here on the right. We're not going to do any of that today, but you get the idea. Hopefully, that that was a pretty quick way for us to kind of dive in and do this. So once again, we're just going to click publish. After a few seconds, that finishes up. We are good, right? So we'll go back to here. And so that was the product views. And so now we want to go to table and we need to do the same thing for vendor. So vendor and then views. Find your active vendors, right? Public view defaults, what we're really looking for here. Click on that. And same, almost identical, right? We're going to remove this one, view column. And so here, you know, a lot of times I'll end up using this, but maybe we're going to throw in the main contact. And then maybe this time to go with that main contact, we will add the related column of main contact. And then here I want their email. So I'm going to use the search to make that easier to find. There you go, main contact email. And so then that should populate in. Perfect. And then as you know, right, then we can just start to oh, turn off the filter there. And so if you want to pull in the region column, uh, you know, their contract date, what other, whatever other columns you might want to add. But that to me, good enough. How it approved or not, right? That seems important. And so we've built another view. So now we'll hit publish. And right, crazy enough, like this feels like Shane very random, but this is honestly all we're going to do because now that both of these are done, we're going to jump over and build ourselves a model driven app. All right, that finished up. So we go back. Now keep in mind as well, you know, we could go over here and build charts and dashboards. We're not going to do that today. And especially because I didn't really want to go down that road in Canvas apps. Maybe we'll add that as an add-on series later. But that is definitely the stuff that Juan gets much deeper into uh, with his model driven class. With all that done, now we're going to go back to our solution, right? So we'll go over here uh, to tables and then we'll go up and so we'll say all. And now we're going to do a new app model driven app. Okay, what are we going to call this? Model vendor and product management. You know, we could give a description, we're going to model all that. We'll say create. So this is creating the blank model driven app, right? But we're then going to then have to update. Okay, so this drops you into their studio. All you really need to do is hit this big purple button here, say add page, dataverse table, next. What tables do we want to add? We want to add product. And so we're looking for, um, we're looking for product. Now, unfortunately I named them the same again. So hopefully that's the right one. I think it is. And then here we're also going to search for vendor and I bet we're going to have to have the same guessing game with this one. So vendor, we'll take the second one for that one as well. We'll know right away if we did it right or not. So we'll say add, those look like our vendors. I feel pretty good about that. Those look like our products. I feel pretty good about that. So believe it or not at this point, you could basically call yourself done, right? You, we're going to have a model driven app. So if we just were to say, save this thing and then we'll publish it just to be careful, but I don't really think we'd have to publish at this point. We're going to just to be safe. And now it's published. And so we're going to hit play, which will open up a new tab and take us to the actual app. It's done. It works, right? Like if we go in here and we want to go update tennis ball, right? So click on tennis ball and we said, Hey, add a product file and a product image. So if we go here to my downloads, there's a tennis ball. It's been uploaded. It's not showing Not surprising. If we go back, back, there it is. So that's working. You know, if we wanted to go in here and so how about we want to create a new product, right? So just a new product, product name, we'll call this another class price is 49. And then we'll set the term here to be um, monthly vendor will be, and we can just do a search. So, Power, there it is, Power Apps 911. Now notice you can't save the image until after you've saved the record the first time, so no big deal, just hit save. This will create the record, now this interface shows up. And then now inside of here, I can find, oh, there's my image right there. 
and we drop it in here. And so if we go back over. Now, also, you know, we could start to have a little bit more fun. So if we had charts, we could show those that show over on the left. We don't have any. Um, we also, if we go back into like tennis ball, hit this little interface, and now we get a very familiar setup, right? We're seeing the things over on the left. So think of this like a gallery if you're a Canvas app person. Over on the right is your form. Vendors, same type of thing. Now, another really neat thing about this, like if we click on Power Apps 911, so what if we want to see the related vendor or the related products, right? Click on related. Relate. Look, it automatically knows. Did we set any of this up? No, right? It just knows. It is just built-in functionality. How cool is that? And look, that is the product associated view. So what does that tell you? If you wanted to customize that view, what would we do? We'd go back over to Dataverse and our tables, we would find the view called product associated view and we would customize it to make it, you know, show the other columns, whatever you wanted. And so that's one of the things we'll cover in a later video, right? But there is so much going on here. We did such little work and model driven apps just made all this awesomeness. Like it's enough to make my brain hurt. We've got a model driven app. So that means in the next video, we got to start building a Canvas app. I promise we will not get the Canvas app built in one video. It's probably gonna be like three. It takes a little bit more work. We're gonna have more customization options though, a little bit more control, but we wanna compare and contrast. So the link to that video is up there, or if the video is not out, it'll be out tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe so you get notified when that video drops out tomorrow. All right, and with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.